There are a few ways to figure out the molecular geometry for H2CO3. This is formaldehyde. So first, we'll look at the Lewis structure and this table here based on steric number. That's the number of things attached to the central carbon. So here's our central carbon. We have two hydrogen atoms there, and then we have this double bonded oxygen. So we have three things attached, and we don't have any lone pairs on the carbon. These electrons here, they're all involved in chemical bonds. So zero lone pairs, it's trigonal planar. And the bond angles, they're 120 degrees. We could also visualize the structure. Let's do that. So the purple, that'll be the carbon atom. Let's add two of those hydrogen atoms, one, two, and you see they spread out to be as far away as they can from each other. Then let's add that double bonded oxygen on top. And that's going to give us this trigonal planar molecular geometry here. And the bond angles, they're going to be 120 degrees. The electron geometry, that's also trigonal planar because we don't have any lone pairs on the carbon. So it's just the same as the molecular geometry. Let's go back to our Lewis structure. So we could also use what's called the AXE notation to figure out the molecular geometry or shape here for H2CO3. A, that's the central atom, that's the carbon. X, that's the number of atoms attached to the carbon. We have one, two, three. And then E, that's the number of lone pairs. But all of these electrons here, they're involved in chemical bonds, so we don't have any lone pairs. If you look up AXE, you'll find that it's trigonal planar. The bond angle is 120 degrees. This is Dr. B with the molecular geometry for H2CO3 formaldehyde. We also looked at the bond angles and the electron geometry for formaldehyde. Thanks for watching.